All right, here are some of the most asked questions about running and mindfulness. What would be your suggestion for a pre-race warm-up that doesn't rub your performance? I would do a pre-race warm-up the same way that you have been warming up for any run during the week. Just keep it consistent, nothing new, you'll do great. Yeah, exactly. And already also incorporating the micro hits into it. You have to overcomplicate things, but always thinking about not just getting your body ready, but your entire system, so to speak, and your mind is part of it. What are the best ways to work on speed work? Hills, intervals, and going at your own pace. Because it's somewhat more intense in a certain way. So if you're experiencing a higher intensity of fatigue, that is a fantastic opportunity to work with the micro hits exactly in that moment to learn to deal with these unpleasant experiences that you have. But they don't last for very long, so it's a great opportunity for a micro hit. Is it okay to add other types of exercise or even fitness classes on top of the running training? It is okay, but I do not suggest it because your week is already full and you want to be fully recovered for your runs, your strength and your mindfulness. With the one exception, I would say, the active recovery that we we're talking about in the program, anything that will um, help you recover quicker, but nothing that would um, strain your body even more. What is the number one rule to follow if you are a heavy set person using a running routine to lose weight? I would say if you're new to a running program, um, you should mix in walking and running. Um, there's no shame in just being able to recover and also having the activity of running. Yeah, and I would also always suggest taking a holistic approach. In running, what is an ideal warm-up? In running, an ideal warm-up is something that is dynamic, just like the sport you're about to do. So dynamic being moving, flowing, um, you should be getting your full stretches, a little bit of pre-race running uh, if you are racing. Yeah, I would say umbrella term is something that you do that gets your body and your mind in the perfect setup for you to perform at your best from the very beginning. I have heard that running on pavement is not the best for your knees. What surfaces are best to train on and how often should we run on pavement? I always suggest running on you know, soft dirt or gravel or wood chips. Um, grass fields, but uh, the least pavement the better, but if you can't avoid it, uh, make sure you can kind of get in some soft surface when you can. How to run safely to prevent injury if you have never run before this training? You should start slow. The number one thing is to build the foundation, get all the little details after the run, which include your hydration, a good meal, stretching after the run. That's all going to keep you injury free and make it to that starting line. Take it easy, small, manageable steps um, and you will build over time. How do I train my mind to run consistently? I'm having difficulties in that my mind tells me I can't do it. Any tips on remaining positive? Um, you train your mind to um, help you run consistently, okay, would be the first step. So, in order to do something consistently, you want to create a routine. And once you have been implementing this routine, which takes effort, it's not easy at the beginning, but after weeks and some months, it will turn into a habit, and then the consistency is not as effortful anymore. It becomes somewhat effortless. And if you're noticing that your mind is telling you that you can't do it, that's actually fantastic. Um, number one, that you're noticing that your mind is telling you that means that it's not happening subconsciously anymore. Only things that you are conscious of is, are things that you can work with, number one. Number two, it's kind of helpful to know that that particular thought goes through everybody's mind at some point, sometimes more, sometimes less. Training your mind with the exercises that you're doing in this program, number one. Number two, it is also by proving your, the voice in your head wrong. Because if the voice in your head tells you, I can't do this, and then you actually do do it, then you know experientially, oh, the voice isn't correct. So you kind of proven yourself wrong, right? 
There's no one technique that is better than the other. Um, it's really, um, we are teaching you all of these techniques so you can choose which techniques you want to do because they work better for you at different points in time. At the end of the day, you have to have a goal, whether it's for that day that I just want to get through these 60 minutes or it's for that day of I want to prepare for this marathon and I want to do it with purpose. As long as you have purpose in that pursuit, and you can turn that purpose into positivity a day at a time. What should I wear on my run? You should wear something comfortable that looks good, because if you look good, you'll feel good. So before you go out and buy a whole new wardrobe, I would suggest experiment, like buy one or two pieces, or, it may, or just use the ones that you have, run with them a little bit, and then you can notice, do you feel good in them? And then you're fine. And if you notice there is some unpleasant kind of sensations, physical sensations, then you know that's something you don't want to use. How do I find the best running shoe for me? You know, through trial and error. I think at some point, you're looking at a shoe wall, you're looking at all these options, and you just have to go for something that you think is best for your personal foot. If you're a neutral runner, if you pronate, um, those things are, are good to know. Everything that you just said, and especially highlighting the trial and error, so like you have to experiment to a certain degree. I mean, you can't buy seven different pairs of shoes and then, you know, trial them. But you can go into stores and like, really you want to spend a little bit of time with them because it is so individual that, you know, I know that David is wearing a pair of shoes that if I'm running in them, it would not work and vice versa. So, you're not, you're not gonna be any different. Does the weight of a running shoe affect performance? They are amazing tools, but they are not going to win you the race. I think there's too much emphasis on footwear. Uh, it just has to be comfortable, it will perform. I mean, every running shoe company is making amazing shoes, so it really has to be the athlete that's gonna take us to, the, to that victory. How do I know when to retire an old pair of running shoes? I know when I need to retire an old pair of running shoes is when in the forefoot, which is the front of your foot, you'll start to feel, it just starts to feel a little painful or your feet feel fatigued halfway through your run. So it's very individual. Um, some shoes last longer than others for certain people, so it's just it's personal, but just feel it. And if your feet don't feel great, then you should get a new pair of shoes. Yeah, exactly. So because it depends on where you run, you know, what kind of shoe Surfaces. you have, right, and so forth. But what that actually points to is also you need to pay attention to how they feel in order to be noticing how they feel. So if you do the micro hits and you never direct your attention to how your feet feel when you're hitting the ground, then it will take you actually, um, it will take you until that point where the feeling of the shoe is so unpleasant that you notice it even without paying attention to it. Should I wear new running shoes for a marathon? You should wear a running shoe that you're very comfortable running in, that you've run in before, um, that model. I would say a shoe that you've broken in but isn't you know, completely lifeless. Like we said, it's got to feel good on your foot still, striking, but not a new shoe out of the box, unfortunately. It would be cool. Yeah, I agree. Awesome.